Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're here with us today. We're glad uh, folks on Facebook and YouTube are tuned in with us today as well. Got a few announcements here. Uh, come back this evening, 6 p.m. The adult study will continue with Ray Vanderland's series that the world may know. Also, the youth will also be here at 6 p.m. as well. And if you know somebody that needs a ride or, or would like to come, come and see Ed and uh, get him the information. Uh, the general board will meet right after the worship service this morning in the front classroom. Also, join us midweek uh, for the Bible study each Wednesday, 10 a.m., uh, currently with a study based on the movie The War Room. So put that on your calendar. Also, we have some opportunities, some addresses and names of folks here, opportunities to encourage. Why, if you have a chance, why you drop one on the call or give my call. Do we have any other announcements? If not, we'll turn to our prayer concerns. Uh, lift up the family of uh, Bob and Carolyn Wilkinson, uh, as both of them passed away this last week battling the effects of COVID. Uh, Carol is Jimmy Hickson's cousin. Also remember William Mullins, he's awaiting test results from a neurologist to struggle with ongoing pain and mobility issues with his arms and back. Certainly keep William in your prayers. Judy too. Uh, Cadence Chase, scheduled for an extended EEG and a visit to the neurologist this Thursday. And Kevin's here with us today. Did you say hi? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> uh, Shirley Philpott is feeling a little bit better, and she's with us this morning. Good to have you here, Shirley. Thank you. Uh, Jackie Shadon, she is recovering from surgery and was released by her doctor to go back to work. She said she didn't like that last couple of words to go back to work. <laughs> But I talked to her last week and she's doing really well. Doing really well. So keep her in your prayers. Uh, remember all of them in the nursing home during this difficult time. Brandon and Hickson, Paula Hutton, and Louis Romine. And remember those battling cancer. It's, it's a long list and a lot of folks on it. So I remember each one of those and their, their families. Uh, be in prayer for those serving our nation and their families. Certainly keep them in our prayers. Do we have any additions to our prayer concerns? I got two of them. Okay. But what are they? Angie Haley's husband, she's got her husband's got cancer and H A N. I can't say it right. That's okay. God knows who we are. Hannah? Hannah? Hannah. Hannah. We'll certainly keep them in our prayers, okay? Okay. I heard you say their names. Yes. <laughs> Any others? Um, Jody Poole will be heading to California and we'll be there today. And we're getting settled in and she'll have her surgery on the 16th. So if we could just say a few extra prayers for her, she's, she's a pretty expensive surgery. Certainly keep Jody Poole in your prayers while they're at the hospital in California and they're going to probably her second surgery. So pretty extensive, so I certainly set up some extra prayers for them when you have a chance. Any others? Um, Kathy Sattler is having surgery tomorrow for her cancer, and the doctor said it looks like she won't have to have chemo, so, so let's, let's hope that the case tomorrow is for that, that's the question. We'll pray that works out that way, for sure. Any others? If not, we can take these needs to Father, we just give you thanks. It's always a privilege to lift up our friends and loved ones to you. Father, we know that you are the great physician and you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Father, we ask your hand of healing upon each and every one of these cases. And Father, we again we give you thanks in your son Jesus' name. Father, we just ask you to be a lot of land and good. share I want to share with you this morning so I apologize for so many words
words, but I don't know how to shorten it to get my message across. So last week, um, I had a really big week. I had a privilege. Um, I had written a grant, and uh, 110 educators came from all across the state to learn, and it was a big deal. But do you ever have something that you just know is God? It's God. Like, like the whole thing wasn't about I wrote a grant and these people came. It was like it was supposed to happen. And let me tell you how I know. The week was perfect. Now, wait, it wasn't too perfect. So, like, a caterer come one day, and he was like, listen, COVID, you know, has really messed me up. So I have all of these dishes out here, but I have no serving tongs. And so I'm sorry. I have no serving tongs. And guess what? I was like, help is on the way, because the week before, I was in the store, and I saw serving tongs. Now, why would you need serving tongs when you do a transition? <coughs> I don't know, but God told me to buy them because I, I just knew. I knew I had to have them, so I stuck them in my... I actually had to go back because I put them back and I was like, nah, I don't need those. And then something I just felt, I need those. And I put them in the cart. Well, guess what? I had eight. Guess how many he needed? Eight. And guess what? Then I was able to share with the whole place. I was like, well, let me tell you how cool God is. Right? I knew I needed serving tongs. He said, buy serving tongs. I bought serving tongs. Shut up. I needed serving tongs. That was cool to me. That was a little wink from God. Hey, when you need something, I give you what you need. Huh. Pretty cool. Now, the week wasn't perfect at all. I did some really stupid things. Like one morning, I wore a white shirt and I went to McDonald's to get coffee. Now, have you ever drank coffee from McDonald's? Yeah. If you're not paying attention, it leaks all over you. So I'm all happy with myself. I'm drinking coffee and I spilled a little bit on the side of my jacket. I was like, oh no, it'll be alright. So you know, you rub it in, you ever do that when you spill something. It'll be fine. Well, then I go to the restroom when I get there, and it spilled all over the front of me. I guess it was leaking the whole time I was drinking it. I had coffee everywhere. I was like, really? Okay. But it was fine. Who cares? Nobody cared I had coffee on my shirt but me. But then I did stupid things like this. There was a dude who didn't have any hair. And uh, I was like, had this whole activity plan, and I'm like, okay, everybody, Let's match up with someone that has the same length of hair as yours. Oh, oops. <laughs> right? So as a teacher, that's bad. You all should know your audience and know who's there. But I was like, oops, so I was a little embarrassed. And he laughed, and it was fun, and it was fun. And then one time I had them all stretching, and I bought these tarts because research tells us that we remember things if we connect all of our senses. So I bought these little uh, wax tarts, but the room was huge. It was like five times as big as this. And um, so I was like, I wonder if they can smell it. So all of these thoughts are going through my head. So I'm like, reach for the sky, reach as high as you can. And at that time, the thought came in my head, wonder if they can smell the tarts. So I said, do you smell anything? They busted up laughing because they're, right? And I was like, oh, that was bad. And so I had to go back and explain it all. So the whole week was, you know, not perfect, but it was perfect. And I could feel it. Could you ever feel it? You feel God's purpose. So a lady comes to me and she starts sharing. Hey, you know, uh, uh, we were talking back and forth and I find out that she has a son that's just about ready to start to drive and she's just about ready to become a single mom. And I was able to share with her, guess what? You'll make it. It's okay. You'll make it through that because that had been my experience and I was able to share with her my experience. Or maybe the whole purpose of the week was because there was a guy there who had taught 28 years. And he came to me and he said, I just want you to know this is exactly what I needed. I kind of was getting bored with myself. I kind of lost my purpose. But this helped me have the fire I need again to go and teach my students. How cool is that? How cool is that? So all those little wings from God, I just felt that purpose. God always gives you exactly what you need when you need it. Hmm. So today, you're in this pew because you're supposed to be here today. God brought you here for a reason. It might be because you're going to smile at someone and that's exactly what they needed today. It might be that Pastor Rick's going to say something and you're going to be like, whoa, that just changed.
changed my life. It might be that one of these songs is going to come back to you this week when something's happening and you're going to go, hmm, God loves me. But God always gives you what you need exactly when you need it. Hmm. These new little chill bumps, how about you? Beautiful. Our next song this morning is number 529. Oh, God, I love Jesus. We're going to sing all four verses.
Thank you all for being here this morning. It is a nice day to be up about in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> you know, we go around, we go to work, we go to the store, we come to church. Everywhere we go, we come across people that we like and friends. And we come across people that we don't like or that we don't agree with. And by and large, right now, people are really stressing about things that they don't agree with. Like, oh, well, if you didn't get vaccinated, you're a bad person. If you didn't vote this way, you're a bad person. If you go to this church, you're a bad person. If you go to this school, you're a bad person. And it really gets old. Particularly when you're looking at the person going, I'm not a bad person. I know I'm not a bad person. And by the same token, you hear somebody talk about someone else and you're going, no, I've worked with that guy for many, many years and he's not a bad person. You know, this person's taught my kids and they're not a bad person. But we all get lumped into groups. Well, as we come to church here, we're lumped into a group. And whenever we leave church, we get lumped into different groups. Well, that's really a shame. Whenever we leave church, people ought to be lumping us into the same group we're in here in this building. If they're not, we're kind of messing things up. Because if they're not, if people look at you and don't know that you're a Christian, then you should be changing things about yourself. If you look at somebody that you know goes to church and you know they're a Christian, you know that they volunteer and help out, and that you don't like them because of something else that they do, you're still kind of messing up. And if you look at someone that you don't know if they're a Christian or not, you know, you see them making some bad choices, and you're disliking that person, and you're not reaching out to that person in prayer, you're not speaking to that person and inviting them to church and stuff, you're still kind of messing up. I'm going to read a little bit from Ephesians here. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself in our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier by dividing the wall of hostility. You know, every person who comes to know Christ, who's accepted Jesus, will be with us in heaven. And every person, regardless of how good they are, not, how good they are, that hasn't accepted Christ, won't. That's the group we really want to be lumped into. Is the group that's there in heaven. The people around us, our family, our friends, our coworkers. You know, I don't love anyone, but I dislike enough not to want to see them there in heaven. And I'm guilty of it as anyone else. I'm not real good about reaching out and telling people I'm going to pray for them or inviting them to the church and things like that. And I need to be better, but we don't do. As we gather around the table, we ask God to fill our hearts with them so that we can like pass those around us. I say it every time I pray. We really should mean that. We should be so filled with God's love and it's so obvious about it that every person around us looks at us and goes, I want what they have. It's a hard choice. It's hard to do it. You know, when we walk out of here, it's hard to do. And we need to ask as we gather around the table here for the strength to do that. You go with me in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses. So we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever.
morning. Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's several important words in that short scripture, but maybe one of the most important is that word go. We are to go. We are to share God's word with the world. Everywhere we go <coughs> at all times. Am I just losing this? I think the battery is Okay. Well, we'll try it. This. You hear me all right? Okay. So we're to go. We're to spread the gospel to the entire world. We're going to be looking today at going, the people who go. We often refer to these people as missionaries. Well, what is a missionary? What's a missionary look like? Who is considered a missionary? Who was Jesus talking to when he said this? That's what we're going to be looking at today. But first, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. Be with us today in this service. Open our minds, open our ears. May we hear and understand what you want us to hear and understand. May we glean from it. May we take it with us out into the world. Lord, we love you and are so grateful that you are here with us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, every church that I have ever been affiliated with, no matter where I've been, has had some kind of a mission program. Sometimes it's led just by one person. Sometimes it's a committee, a group. Sometimes lay men, sometimes lay women, a combination of the two. Sometimes led by a deacon. Sometimes led by an elder. If you're at a mega, mega church, they may even hire a minister just to handle the missions. Now, these people that they hire, or those that tend to, tend to lead these teams, often have an ability to make maps and charts and graphs and all kinds of information to show people what their mission money is going to, where it's going to, how it's being used. Now, here at First Christian Church in Gentry, we make decisions on those by the board. If someone knows someone, a mission or a missionary, that needs help, they can take it to a board member and they will take it to the board. We will discuss it and decide when and if and how much we are going to give to whatever mission or missionary. That brings up the question, just what is a missionary? Well, according to the dictionary in Merriam-Webster, it says a missionary is a person undertaking a mission and especially a religious mission. I'm glad they added that last part about being a religious mission. For a minute there, I thought we were looking for James Bond or Ethan Hunt, something like that. For those not familiar with who Ethan Hunt is, he was the main agent in the old, old TV series, Mission Impossible, which has now been quite a successful movie series. Whereas most missions are not, some can seem like a mission impossible. They're very difficult. They can be very challenging until we remember that we have the best missionary of them all involved in Jesus Christ. When Jesus is involved, they're not impossible. There's three things I want to talk about as far as missionaries go. The first thing is that missionaries are not a special class of Christians. Oftentimes we think of Christians as someone that's been to a lot of Bible college or Bible school, taken lots of extra classes. They have achieved a certain level in their Christianity in order to become a missionary. <laughs> missionaries are not a level. Missionaries are a calling. Missionaries are called to go and deliver the word of God. Second, missionaries are believers who take the gospel to others. It's not complicated. 
we tend to make missionary work and missionaries a much more complicated thing than it really is. They are people taking the word of God to others. Now, some of the places they go can be quite complicated. Some of them can be quite dangerous. We talked a little bit about this in our Sunday school class today. The roads and the places that they went on Paul's missionary journeys were quite dangerous in many cases. You might remember Amy. She came to speak to us a couple of years ago. She was going to a very dangerous place. She's there now in the Middle East. It's a place where she can't say what she's there for. When she communicates back to us, she has to communicate to us in code. 